All right, we're back for our last problem, number 10 in this quiz in chapter 3. And it's a tough problem, there's no question. So I'm glad we're doing this in recitation because you'll get a chance to kind of look it over and play with it. And so we're in our last part of the problem here, so let's take a look. It says, refer to table 3-7. This is our table 3-7, we've been using this the whole way through. It says, assume that Japan and Korea each has 2,400 hours available. We've done that, there they are. If each country spends all its time producing the good in which has a comparative advantage, and trade takes place at a price of 12 cars for six airplanes then. Okay, now, we've been to the comparative advantage. We know that Japan's gonna specialize in cars. We know that Korea's gonna specialize in planes. That's, that we've done that in problems eight and nine, all right? So now we know Japan's got 80 cars and Korea's got 16 planes. We know for Korea that one plane can buy three cars in Korea. And we know in Japan that one plane can buy five cars, okay? So, they're now telling us, it says here, the trading prices, this new price, is that 12 cars are equal to six planes, all right? What's that mean? That means that one car is equal to half a plane, or it means that one plane is equal to two cars. Remember, I just divided both sides by 12 here. That gave me one car is equal to half a plane. And then I just take the flip of it, right? I can go the other way and divide both sides by six, divide this by six, divide that by six. That gives me one plane is equal to two cars. So those are the prices. And the question is, does anyone gain here? Does this hurt anybody? Well, Japan would say, hmm, I'm specializing in cars. And at this price, I can spend two cars and get one plane. For Japan, that is an amazing deal. Why? Because here, one of their cars internally can only buy a fifth of a plane. But at these new prices, one of their cars can buy a half a plane. All right? So for Japan, suddenly their cars are much more valuable because they can buy more planes than they could do it internally themselves. Right? Japan has to give up, every time they produce a car, they give up a fifth of a plane. Or in other words, one car costs them a fifth of a plane. And here, one car in this market costs half a plane. All right? So here, cars are really expensive, or meaning cars can buy a lot of planes. So Japan is going to say, whew, this is a good deal, right? I can just spend two cars to buy a whole plane here, whereas my own country, I had to spend five cars to, in essence, buy one plane, all right? So Japan loves these prices. These are very good prices for Japan because they've specialized in cars, and now cars have become much more valuable in the terms of they can buy bigger, or excuse me, not bigger, more planes. Does this help Korea? Well, he said Korea specialized in planes, right? So Korea goes and produces 16 planes. Now, alternatively, one plane, every time they produce a plane, they gave up three cars. But here, this is saying that one plane is only going to buy two cars. So for Korea, internally, they can take their one plane and buy three cars in their own country. The trade is saying, well, take one of your planes, you're only going to get two cars for it. This is a terrible deal for Korea. This makes no sense for Korea to trade. Korea is stuck producing cars, not stuck, they produce a lot of, excuse me, stuck producing planes, and with those planes, cars have become really expensive because they can only get two cars for every plane, whereas before they specialized, they could get three cars for their plane. So for Korea, these, this new trading price is really disadvantageous. It doesn't work for them. They're not going to trade because, again, one plane is only buying two cars with this price, and their own internal price of one plane for three cars, what Korea would do would start taking resources and labor away from planes, putting it back into cars, and they'd do it themselves because the world price of cars is simply too expensive. Alternatively, Japan loved this, as we said, because one plane, well, they had to use five cars to get one plane. Now they can only use, they only have to use two cars to get one plane. Japan loves this trading price and would want to trade as much as it could. So, what does that leave you for an answer? The answer is B, Japan will gain from this trade, but Korea will not, okay? And hopefully I've made that clear. The price got really terrible for Korea, it got really good for Japan, and Japan would gain, Korea would not, Korea would probably stop trading, and again, not specialize and start to produce cars by itself. So, problems eight, nine, and 10 are very challenging. This kind of table is, is, is difficult, but I think we've gone through it in great detail. So hopefully if you see this on the test, and you'll probably see this in the test, 
you can handle something like this uh, pretty effectively. All right, so we're done chapter three. I will see you for chapter four in supply and demand. But uh, again, dig in and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.